welcome everybody. We are live, Dave Cooper Live, where we bring you the people, the products, and the processes helping us to build it better. Today, National Association of Home Builders pledges to tackle the housing affordability crisis and key issues to enable a robust housing market. But what does a robust housing market actually mean? How does this work? Benefit builders of all sizes across the country and protect our home owners. Today, we welcome chair of the National Association of Home Builders, Elisha Huey, as we dive into the home builder headlines and potential solutions for high interest rates, cost and scarcity of skilled labor, and buyer expectations today on Dave Cooper Live. But before we hop into all that awesome stuff, we cannot bring you all these informative conversations without our sponsors. So be sure to say hi to them as well. Forward Solutions Group is successfully driving companies to succeed where others have failed. Are you looking to start a factory? optimize your existing factory, streamline your production, or take your team to the next level. Whatever your needs are, Forward has a solution for you. Reach out to Ben at forwardsolutionsgroup.com. Halleck LTD has a long history of innovation in cold form steel manufacturing and producing innovative precision roll forming technology for customers throughout the United States and the world. Check out their machine buyer's guide for offsite modular construction or fast build construction with light steel for framing. Go to their website, HalleckLTD.com. Brought to you by Great Tech, one of the largest Autodesk partners globally and software developer of the PowerPack Advanced Design, Advanced Steel, and the StruxSoft product line. The complete solution to automate wood and light gauge steel framing, design, and documentation all the way out to CNC output, model, design, and manufacture with StruxSoft. Learn more at StruxSoftSolutions.com. All right, listen, thank you to all of our supporting members that are out there. And please take a moment to go and thank them as well. We cannot continue to do what we do without them. So before we get into it, we're going to bring Alicia on. I want everybody to know there is a QR code right here, there, above me. That's going to be on the screen the entire show. That's right. We're giving away 28. That's right. 28 free expo passes to the big show, the International Builder Show 2024, coming up at the end of this month. And three of those tickets come with the full education sessions. And that's an $875 value for all of you out there. So take that QR code, click on it, and make sure you sign up for a chance to win. All right. Without further ado, let's bring on Alicia Hewitt. Hey, Alicia, how are you? Hi, Dave. I'm great. How are you? And I am doing wonderful. Thank you very much. This is exciting to have you on. We love having, you know, the chairs of the NAHB on our show. We love to hear from people at the top telling us what's happening across the country and how we're making home building better for everybody, not just the builders, but the consumers that buy from the builders as well. But before we get into that, Alicia, we want to know everything about you from the moment you were born to this very moment in time. Do not leave out any of the good stuff from the hospital or we will have your family members on the show and it will get embarrassing and I will call you out on it. But you only got about a minute and a half, two minutes to do it. The floor is yours. Oh, thank you. Yeah, I appreciate that because I'm sure my mom could embarrass me terribly. So um, so, you know, I didn't take the typical path to becoming a home builder, as um, some people do. People assume that either my family's been in the home building business or my husband is. And that's neither the case. Um, I went to college to major in early childhood education. And after college, went to work for my husband in the title insurance business. And one day had an opportunity to hop to volunteer with Habitat for Humanity. And I fell in love with it. Volunteered one day, came home and told him I wanted to go back the next day, came home that night and said I wanted to change careers and um, go into the home building industry. And that's been 24 years ago. And it's been extremely re rewarding um, as far as my involvement in the association. I've been involved in my local association, state association, and of course, now the National Association. And it's been such an honor for me to serve 
as NHB's chairman this year. Um, my company is in Birmingham, Alabama. I'm a small builder. I don't have any employees, although with my involvement in the home builders, I have got a part time superintendent. So um, but I love what I do, love what our industry stands for and love representing the members. So thank you. And thank you again for having me this morning. It's exciting to be able to talk about an industry that I love so much and an association that I care so much about, too. Well, you know what? You've been you've been part of this industry for a long, long time. You're a practitioner in the industry, not just a leader in the industry, which I think is amazing. You know, how can you just give us an overview? How does the NAHB, you know, help uh, the association of builders that belong deliver the American dream, as people like to call it, as home ownership? I tell you, when you say that, I think there's three things that come to mind um, in helping our members regulate or navigate the regulatory environment. And then also, you know, help them with financial impacts or sometimes shock of like building materials and interest rates and how we can help educate them. And then lastly is the big one, and that's workforce. Right. So, you know, and we're going to touch on all of these today because, you know, workforce is, is a big, big challenge that's happening. And we're going to pull up a chart here and we're going to walk through some of the challenges of 2024 and what the key problems are. You know, we'll be able to see a little bit about all of those as we go through this. So with that report, you know, when we talk about the challenges such as labor, regulatory environments, interest rate, right? Uh, and I think before the show, you said you even had your three L's to go through, and I think we'll touch base on that. You know, how is the overall market changing right now? And what are you seeing just on a, on a broad view? Are we seeing a better 2024 as far as the housing market? Or are we seeing, you know, something that isn't uh, as good as 2023 and 2024? You know, I think we're quite optimistic about 2024. And you, if you listen to Rob Dietz, who is, has a ton of resources, Dr. Dietz is our chief economist at the association. He believes that 2024 is going to be a pivotal year for us and really be good. The second half, he expects interest rates to come down. Um, we're forecasting a gain of about 5% and single family starts for 2024. Um, our uh, uh, builder survey that we do, the HMI, the Housing Market Index, has talked about it, it's at 44 now, but it is increasing and increased over the last month, which yeah. which speaks to builder optimism in the market. I love it. Um, are you all right if I pull up the top challenges for builders in 2024 chart and maybe we can walk through a couple of these because it is the main talking point right now? Yeah, let's look at those. So here we go. So at the very top of this is interest rates. And, and and I'll give you my two cents on it real quick. And it's funny because I was talking to a realtor recently and the realtor was saying, you know, you know, the interest rates are kind of where they're at. They went up from 2023. And what they're starting to see is people are starting to get comfortable with where the new interest rates are. Uh, and they expect to see houses start moving more. What are you guys seeing on your end with the high interest rates? Yeah, I think so. I really think that as in when you look at any big purchase, people sometimes have to get over a sticker shock of something that they want. So I think that interest rates settling down and um, and the possibility of them coming down um, is, is helping us, although I think the possibility of them coming down may have some people waiting a little bit longer. But I think if they can settle somewhere around, you know, six um, later next year, six and a half, I think would be great for our industry. And Rob Deet's podcast um, this last month, he talked a little bit about that. So I think that helps to speak to our optimism for, yeah. for what this year brings. For sure. And and for, for those of you out there, Rob Dietz has been on this show before as well. So you can go check out some of his uh, interviews that we had. And uh, on top of that, you know, for an economist, he's a fun speaker, too. He's, he's fun to listen to. And he really uh, he breaks it down. And I, I like I like to say layman's term for all of us that are not financial geeks uh, to understand what's truly happening out there. Um, so with the interest rates and, and, and the, the steadying, do we see that as holding steady into 2020, all the way through 2024, 2025, and then dropping? Or have you had any conversation on if it's going to go up even higher? Um, I don't think I don't believe that we believe it'll come back. It'll go up any higher. But of course, we don't have the crystal ball. We never would have thought yeah. we'd have seen three, though, right? <laughs> Either. Yeah, for sure. For sure. <laughs> Let's talk about labor, Alicia. What is happening with labor? We're all struggling for it. We're struggling for the skilled labor workforce. I know that was part of your uh, top three L's. Why don't you tell us what your thoughts are? 
Yeah, labor is, is tight, especially those those extremely skilled um, subcontractors, electricians, plumbers, HVAC guys and, and gals. Um, that's getting tougher. Um, our Home Builders Institute, uh, HBI, is working um, to train people and, and get them out there. We have, you know, workforce development. A lot of our associations across the country are working on that, even developing curriculum and facilities where they can train people and, and work the trades. I think that we also need to change the mindset of parents. That's a big one is to change the mindset of parents that a four year college degree and student debt is not always the way to go. Um, you know, for me, if I, I could have saved my money, my, my parents, a lot of money in, with college, if I just gone straight to home building and not uh, looked into early childhood education. So. Yeah. You know what? You know, it, I could have saved my parents a lot of money and headaches, too, if I knew what I wanted to do at a very young age. But I mean, it's kind of like what happens over time, you know, and, and, and how we move forward in life for sure. You know, the, the workforce development side of this is interesting because even on our show, we are seeing more and more trade schools coming back. Finally, we're seeing more awareness for the workforce happening. Um, are you guys also seeing that with HBI and others? We are. I mean, our associations are all working very hard to bring that to the forefront, make everyone make sure that there's more people aware of the opportunities available in the home building industry. I mean, you know, it's not just it's not just the plumbers and electricians. It's all the people that sell all the products that go into the house, all the people that manufacture those products. So there's so many opportunities broad. Yeah, there definitely is a lot of opportunities moving forward, and it's a great place to be in. We we highly promote it, highly promote it. I don't know if that's the best way to say it, but that's what we do on the show is we promote the daylights out of bringing the young people back into the trades. So as we go through this list, Alicia, you know, one of the other big things that has happened that has put housing costs through the roof has been building material prices. Um, am I seeing some good news on this chart or is it still getting worse? Well, it looks like this speaks to our builder sentiment and that that index that we do. When you look at 23, uh, 24 compared to 23 right now, it looks like we're um, thinking it's, it's coming down a little bit. I think that that prices have stabilized. Now, I don't believe that prices are going to go back to the pre pandemic prices at all, but I think that they have stabilized. Great, great. And and with that being stabilized, you know, and the interest rates, you know, still going up. I mean, it still it still poses a bit of a bit of an issue. What are you guys feeling from your builder members right now with that? You think are we going to see a, a, a stellar year or is it just really going to kind of stay status quo this year on the number of housing units that we're doing? No, I think that, well, we still have, what, a million and a half um, behind in building that we housing that we need. But we have predicted that there's going to be a five five percent increase in starts this year. Of new five percent increase in starts. Wow. That's a good number. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that is a good number. You know, with starts, you need land, right? And, and again, I'm speaking from my own self here because recently moved back to Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. And, uh, you know, trying to find land to build on uh, or develop uh, is becoming more and more scarce, you know. So when we look at some of the, you know, the availability of developed lots, what are you guys seeing? It has gotten really tight. And, and a lot of that has to do with restrictions from different counties, municipalities, states. Um, so those are the conversations that we're also having with our local and state and federal leaders about um, zoning laws and those sort of things to help us find more property that we can develop. Got it. And tell us a little bit about how you how you work with, you know, your local and states on the zoning laws and, and how that actually comes into play. And what does the NAHB actively do to do that? In fact, overall, like, you know, whether it comes to interest rates or, uh, you know, zoning rules and laws. I mean, you guys play a major role in, in working and lobbying for builders rights in all the different states, not just in Capitol Hill. Correct. That's correct. Um, in my time as a um, NHB chairman this year, I've had several opportunities to meet with um, community leaders, and that's mayors and city councilmen, but then also governors, to talk to them about laws that 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 their states or municipalities and counties enact that restrict home building so much. And I, you know, it's not that. We are home builders are not against laws and regulations. We need those for safeties and affordable housing. 
but let's come to the table and have a conversation about what makes the most sense. Let's make it work for everybody so that everybody can be happy and that we can build more homes. I think a lot of, uh, in some cases, governors are seeing that economic development can't come into their state because there's not enough housing for economic development. So there's a lot of, um, a lot of resources that our association offers and in the lobbying that we do and conversations that we have to try to make sure that they're aware of there are other avenues that they can go to and different creative ways that we can come about looking at zoning uh, regulations and laws in those states and municipalities. So when you're looking at relax, I mean, you're kind of saying you're, you're hoping that they can relax the zoning laws to allow for more density. Is that kind of what we're, we're looking at? And also, does that include granny flats, ADUs, dwelling units? I mean, is it is it across the board when you talk about how do you get I mean, how do you even get a state to listen to you? You can't even get them. I can't even get them to open the door for me half the time. I think that our National Association of Home Builders has one of the most respected lobbying teams in D.C. So to some extent, that's an easy thing to do. And when you talk about home ownership, we're fighting not not for us, but for the reality of home ownership to make it not so make it affordable and attainable for the American people not just, and that is in zoning laws. And it, yes, it is in density. We have some municipalities that want to increase lot size and not decrease lot size, but there's a smart way to go about it. You know, having multi um, use um, properties and things like that. We just want to be a resource, not, not the, the thorn in somebody's side when it comes to housing. Yeah. And I mean, I think that's a, I think that's a great point to put out there because you can be a resource to these states. So if there's some uh, state lawmakers out there listening to this, um, it's not really a battle and a fight. It's really how do you collaborate, work together to do what's right for their local communities, right? As well exactly. as what's right on a national level and how can the national level help, you know, establish the rules, regulations that can maybe help them relax what they need to do to allow more housing and, and get people off the streets. There's so many people on the streets these days. It's horrible. Yeah, exactly. Yep. It really is. It really is horrible. So with that, you know, we talk about, you know, how the NHB helps with relaxing the zoning laws. How about with the builder members themselves? How do you help them uh, manage the financial impact you know of the rising interest rates of the material cost rates you know what what do you do on that side to get them to you know find better ways to build and offer you know a more affordable home you know to their home buyers yeah i think the association has a vast array of of ways that we can help and the biggest one is education educating our members making sure they understand what's coming down the pike but then also um We've got toolkits. We host webinars to help members navigate, you know, all of those ebbs and flows of, of economic impact and how that how all of that will affect their business and their bottom line and housing affordability. Um, one of the things that we did during the pandemic was to make sure that builders had escalation clauses during their contracts in the times of those volatile price changes that we had. So that's just one example of what our association can do to help our members navigate through everything like that. Yeah, you mentioned that you do have like these toolkits and webinars for builders, which I think is awesome. You know, do you, do you also have things like this that are that are helping the states that are struggling with how to make this happen? I'm sorry, what? Uh, so, for instance, like so we educate the builders and going back to your regulatory, you know, uh, in helping to relax the zoning laws. You know, are there tools for the states to use with the NAHB as well to, to help look at how they can do some of those things? Or is that in the works as far as putting the education out there? Oh, absolutely. Yes. Of course, education. Um, for states, local associations, absolutely, it is out there. The NHB is a huge resource for all for all of our members, yeah, and for yeah. Our state and local associations too, yeah. Yeah, for sure, for sure. So I love it. So with that said, you know, Alicia, you know, some of the things that you're working on, and maybe that's kind of where I want to jump in, and then we'll get back to our chart. You know, what's been your pressing issue since coming into office as chair? You know, uh, individually, that that you really would like to see change and make better? Um, you know, when I, in this position, you campaign for this position. And one of the things that, um, that I talked about was making sure that our codes became, were, were more common sense, 
I almost feel like we've gone in the opposite direction of that um, because codes have gotten, uh, I, I'm sorry, in my opinion, a little bit out of hand when you think about electrical codes and things like that and energy conservation codes and all of that. Uh, if we could just come again, come to a conversation of what makes the most sense for different areas, because um, we had we get it from the national, you know, from federal level to the state level, the level right. to the local level, all the um, uh, fees and things that are added um, onto the price of, a, of building a home. I think that somewhere we've talked about it's 25 to maybe even 30 percent of the cost of a house is regulation. If we could get regulation under control. It would help the, the the attainability of the American dream for a lot of people. You know what? I completely agree with that. And I think, you know, sometimes we can get too far over our skis with trying to do the right thing, which ends up makes it, making it harder for so many people out there to get what they truly need to get done for housing, to build housing, to buy housing, you know, all of the above. So I appreciate that very, very much. And I think that, you know, the more we keep having this, this type of conversation, because it's state by state, every state's different. There's some, there's some areas in Pennsylvania that don't even need a permit to build still, right? Right. Uh, right. But then other states, I mean, you, you can't even, you know, uh, you can't even get a permit, it seems like. Right. And when you think about when you think about some municipalities think, oh, it's only one hundred dollars or only it's two hundred dollars or only it's three. But they all add up to thousands of dollars. So we really need to think about those just little increments when we look when we talk about the cost of housing. Yeah, I 100% I agree. All right, let's go back to our chart here and get back on uh, on track. You know, um, you know some of the different things, and we hit on some of these, right? Difficulties of attaining uh, zoning permit approval. That's one of the things that we did talk about. And we talked about, you know, the concerns about uh, employment and economic situation. We hit on that. And local, state, environmental regulations. That's something I definitely want to hit on real quick is, you know, in the environmental regulations that are coming out, how do we build it better? Better? How do we build healthier, more sustainable? How do we get our homes to be uh, using less energy? Uh, do you see that as a focus moving forward here in 2024? I do. And the conversation that we've had um, nationally is new construction is already extremely resilient and um, tight, you know, uh, as far as energy efficiency. So let's look at the existing housing stock. How can we incentivize people to put in, you know, uh, ramp up their insulation, replace windows that are energy efficient, doors that are energy efficient, do things like that. They can help the existing housing stock and the existing homeowners. I've asked um, and our members have nationally if there's some sort of a tax incentive that we can give to members that would do. I mean, I'm sorry, to the American people that would do something like that. Replacing if they got to replace their HV AC unit, let's increase the efficiency of that offer some sort of a tax incentive so that we can not only help the um, energy conservation and global warming and that sort of thing, but also help the American people with the cost of their utilities at the same time. And then you also look at regulations like WOTUS. Um, I think that we we're making some headway with that. I thought waters of the U.S. was something I didn't think we'd still be talking about today, but we are. Um, but there, some of those restrictions just got so ridiculous. Um, I talked to one customer about putting a fence in their backyard. Somebody had built a house for and, you know, two doors down, there was a drainage ditch. And I'm like, Can we, do you realize what we'd have to go through to just to put a fence in your backyard to dig a post, dig a post, dig for a post to go in right there? It was it Can just got a little out of hand. Lotus a little bit just so our audience knows what that's about. Well, I'm sorry, that's waters of the U.S. So the restrictions came down to um, not just whatever was going directly into, you know, what was considered waters of the U.S., but a mud puddle became a water of the U.S. So, um, like I said, the, right. the water that this particular one I was talking about, there was a drainage ditch, but dra drainage ditch between two houses only had water in it when it rained. Then, but that went into a, a creek that was Birmingham Waterworks property, which ran in, you know, so that's something God. that you can't affect. But I could I would have to get a federal permit that would take me two years to put this fence in at the restrictions that they had. 
So Understood. Right, right. As you, you from a natural rot or runoff, you can't do any building or or damage right. the soil or disturb it within so many feet. So I hear exactly what you're saying. It's kind of like the wetland laws that uh, yes. are across the United States as well. Yes. I'm going to pivot a little bit here. Let's talk about you know the devastation that happened in Hawaii. Um, and can you tell us a little bit about how the NAHB has participated in those recovery efforts for the fires that took place out there? Sure. Um, I was recently in um, Honolulu and um, their members there are working to help those in Maui and they've established, actually established a fund of which NAHB contributed to $50,000 to help with the rebuilding efforts there in Maui. Um, and we hope that we will able, be able to send members there um, soon to be able to help with the rebuilding efforts in Maui. So with, you know, with sending the, the members in and in, in, in helping with the with the efforts, can you can you dive into that a little bit more? Do you know any of the intricate details on how that actually helps out, helps and comes together? Um, no, I don't. We are still working on preliminary things and, and trying to find the best way that we can fit in to get down there and, and help help them with their recovery efforts. Just right. so devastating when you think about everything that's happened down there. You know, did, did did this experience change the way that you think about home building at all? You know, uh, your boots on the ground, you know, were there any learnings uh, that maybe you could apply or you could share with the audience? Um, you know, I, I think that we can all learn a lot from when 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 devastation happens like this. The wildfires happen across across the country and, and different um different things. But yes, I think we can all learn from those. NEHB has also a staff person, Jonathan Falk, who has been very involved in helping with the recovery efforts, not just there, but any natural disasters that occur um, throughout the country and affect our our members and how, how we can help with rebuilding efforts. Got it. So many well, I, love it. I know we're going to, I know we're going to see a lot about the recovery efforts and people that are helping at the international builder show, which I'm super excited about. You know, there's a lot of companies out there that are, are really focused on, you know, uh, homes that are safer to build in fire areas, you know, that are fire prone areas, high wind areas, you know, hurricane areas. And I think this is going to be a, one of the, the big topics that I see while I'm out there. And I'm looking forward to talking to people about what is it that you're looking forward to at the International Builder Show? Oh, wow. I'm so excited. I can't believe that it's that it's time for the International Builder Show again. I love the networking that we have during the show. But the one thing that I always look for is a startup zone. Those new products. I think that's going to be really exciting to see this year. Always something new and, and exciting to see there. Yeah, yeah. Well, hey, listen, the startup zone is my uh, my thing. I love the startup zone. And we have found so many innovative products there plant uh, planted was there bot built last i think this was last year as well and they're all making headlines across the uh, across the country if not the world and the best part about it was everybody pretty much learned about them at the startup zone uh i was uh, fortunate enough to be able to do the 412 pitch where 12 of those companies had four minutes and alicia it was great you want to know why it was so great why if if they went over their four minutes, I I got I had a don, a gong. I was able to gong them off the stage. It was like oh, a game no. show. We we had so much fun. But what's so great about it is it was such a success last year that now this year it is a super session. It's on the big stage. Uh, there's going to be a lot more companies. I'll be hosting it again, and I'm super excited to to be part of that because you're right. The startup zone has become the place to be at the International Builder Show. Yeah, very exciting. You know, we have over 1,700 brands and companies that are going to be sharing their latest just throughout the show in general. This is going to be the biggest show in um, more than a decade this year. And it's the 80th anniversary of the International Builders Show and the, the 11th anniversary of Design and Construction Week. So lots of things happening. Yeah, you know what? It is a big show. And I'm going to just put it out there for all of you. There is a QR code right above Alicia over there in the corner. So you want to let me see if I use my other hand that way. Uh, so take your phone out, take a take a photo of it. We are giving away free access passes to the International Builder Show. We're also giving away three access passes with the full education session. And again, that's an $875 value. And by the way, those access passes, the other 25 
they're worth a few hundred dollars each, whether you're a member or a non-member determines that number. So uh, it's a great value. And we're hoping to see you at the International Builder Show. It was an amazing, amazing place uh, to be last year and the year before and the year before and the year before. And we're looking forward to it this year. Um, Alicia, are you going to be speaking there or up on stage doing the introductions? What's some great fun? And, uh, you know, is there any insider knowledge you can give us? I think I'll be up on stage a couple of times, but um, for those three people that are going to win those educational passes, there's over 120 educational sessions that you have the opportunity to go to. So um, opening ceremonies is um, I will be there at the opening ceremonies and speaking and welcoming everybody to the show. And our entertainment for that show is going to be the magician, Matt Franco. Excited to see what wow. he has in store for us. Yeah, that's going to be pretty exciting. And then um, on Wednesday, I believe it is, we have the meeting of the members. That's where you can hear from Dr. Dietz and Jim Tobin. He'll give us a kind of a legislative outlook and maybe some predictions for this year. So that's going to be on Wednesday morning. Um, and that's going to be a, a sought after um, show uh, draw there to hear the two of them come up and speak. And then um, the Spike concert, if you're a Spike ticket holder, is going to be Cole Swindell, and that'll be on a Thursday evening. So, and in between that, there's going to be a lot of networking, a lot of YP party. Um, uh, I can't remember. There's just going to be networking everywhere. You know what? And you're absolutely right. And I know you're in the thick of things and your mind probably has 10,000 different places that you've already been asked to go. And I will tell you, you have to plan if you're coming to the International Builder Show, unless you're just looking for something to do and walk around, just show up. But if you're going to go and you truly want to learn about things and see things, it's a big show. You got to plan. It's over a million, at least it was last year, it's over a million square feet of show floor. Uh, that's a lot of walking. I know my, uh, my, my dogs were hurting last year after I was done. <laughs> That's right. It is over a million again this year. And um, it's actually going to be in six distinct categories, kind of like um, all the flooring will be together, all the plumbing will be together. So they won't you won't have to walk a million miles to see to see those. So that's we've um, segmented it this year. Yeah. You know, what? I, think help, that's, I think that's a really smart thing to do. Right. Because, again, people are there for specific reasons. And when you can make it easy for them to find what they're looking for versus all being intermingled, I, th I think there's a lot of value to that. And this will be the first year that you've tried it. So let's uh, let's uh, yeah. let's watch and see how this all comes together. But it sounds like it should be the right thing. Yeah, it's going to be an exciting show, no doubt. Alicia, is there anything that we haven't touched on or anything that you would like to say to our audience uh, before we wrap up here today? Um, you know, I think that if we have people that are listening that are not a member of the association, I, I really want to encourage you to look in becoming a member of the association. We'll have our opportunities. There will be a membership booth at the International Builder Show. I encourage you to stop by there and just have a conversation with somebody. People always ask me when I'm trying to talk about um, Joining the, edu uh, joining the association, what does it mean? And I use MEAN as the acronym. It's Muddy Education, Advocacy, and Networking. We either make you money or save you money. All the advocacy that we've talked about and the regulations that we try to fight for you on the um, uh, national level, federal, state, and local level as well. And then um, the advocacy that we do. And then lastly, the networking that we've talked about. So I want to encourage you to do that and encourage you to come to the International Builder Show. It's going to be a very exciting time. It is going to be an exciting time. And hey, if you want to meet up while we're there again, you can meet me in person at the International Builder Show. And our super session is the launch. Can't miss new products and technology. So you definitely want to be there. 9 a.m. on the 27th. So show up, especially if you want your chance to see the newest and the latest technology in the startup zone. They're all going to be up there pitching four minutes. It's going to be a whirlwind event. It's going to be a little bit like a game show. It's going to happen fast. You're going to get so much knowledge in that hour and a half. Yeah, you might just need a break. You might have to take a nap. You're going to be tired from how much knowledge we're going to give you. That's what's super exciting about it. Alicia, I can't wait to see that. Yeah, it's it's going to be it's going to be a lot of fun. And again, click on that QR code if you want your chance to win some free event passes to include one of those expo passes that'll get you into the super session. So come on, we'll have some fun with it. Um, Alicia, thank you so much for joining us today. I really appreciate having you on the uh, Dave Cooper Live show. This is awesome. And I'm hoping...
during your tour as the chair and as you update the presidents and secretary of housing and all the cool things you get to do as a chair, you can come back on and share where we're where we're headed and where we're going throughout the year, because I, I just think, you know, it's so important for people to hear from the leadership uh, in this industry uh, and give them a chance to put in the comments, ask questions, all those fun things that are happening out there. Uh, and you got people, look at this, look, they like you. Greg Ugaldi, keep up the great work, Alicia and DC <laughs> Live. You got people watching here. I love it. Who is this? We got Mary Jo Quay, and they are exploring alternative building solutions that we can learn from as well. So Very good. the people are out there, they're listening, they want to hear from you. So I appreciate it. So you stay right there. Don't go anywhere. We'll come back to you at the end of the show here to wrap up after our outro. And for the rest of you out there, make sure you click on that QR code. Make sure you click on the comments in the link. You can fill out the form for your chance to win one of 28 free expo passes and three of which that have the education session. So with that said, here's a few more words from our sponsors. So make sure you say thank you to them. Alicia, you don't go anywhere. I'll come back after the outro and the rest of you. Have an awesome Monday because you know what? You got four and a half more days to build it better. It's just the start of an awesome week. Let's keep doing it and let's keep communicating. I'm Dave Cooper. Thanks for watching. What an amazing show. Thank you to all of our sponsors for helping us to continue to bring all of these innovative conversations to all of you out there. Please visit them. See what they have to offer you. And as always, subscribe to the YouTube channel and ring that bell. It would mean the world to us. I'm Dave Cooper. Thanks for watching.